grade readers, today we are reading chapter 3 and chapter 4 of The Absent Author. I'm going to put this in two videos for you. So here's chapter 3. Kidnapped, Ruth Rose shrieked. Her blue eyes were huge. Josh and Dink covered their ears. Shh, said Josh. He handed the letter back to Dink and gave a quick gesture with his head. Some strange woman is watching us. Dink had noticed the woman earlier. She'd been sitting in the back of the book nook. She's coming over here, Ruth Rose said. The woman had brown hair up in a neat bun. Half glasses perched on her nose. She was wearing a brown dress and brown shoes and carried a book bag with a picture of a moose on the side. Around her neck, she wore a red scarf covered with tiny black letters. Excuse me, she said in a soft, trembly voice. Did you say Wallace Wallace has been kidnapped? The woman poked her glasses nervously. Deke wasn't sure what to say. He thought Wallace Wallace had been kidnapped, but he couldn't be sure. Finally, he said, well, he might have been. My goodness, gasped the woman. Who are you? Josh asked her. Oh, pardon me, the woman blushed. My name is Mavis Green, she mumbled. I'm a writer, and I came to meet Mr. Wallace. Dink said, well, I'm Dink Duncan. These are my friends, Ruth Rose and Josh. Mavis shook hands shyly. Then she reached into her book bag and pulled out a folded paper. Wallace Wallace wrote to me last week. He said something very peculiar in his letter. I didn't think much of it at the time. But when he didn't show up today, and then I heard you mention kidnapping, she handed the letter to Dink. Josh and Ruth Rose read it over his shoulder. Dear Mavis, thanks for your note. I'm well, and thank you for asking. But lately, my imagination is playing tricks on me. I keep thinking I'm being followed. Maybe that's what happens to mystery writers. We start seeing bad guys in the shadows. At any rate, I'm eager to meet you in Greenlawn, and I look forward to our lunch after the signing. Wallace, Wallace. Wow, said Ruth Rose. First he says he's being followed, and then he winds up missing. Dink told Mavis about his letter from Wallace Wallace. He said the only thing that would keep him from coming today if he was kidnapped. Oh dear, said Mavis. I just don't understand. Why would anyone want to kidnap Wallace Wallace? If he's the most famous mystery writer in the world, he must be rich, right? Josh said. Maybe someone kidnapped him for ransom. Suddenly, Josh grabbed Dink and spun him around, pointing towards the street. Look, the cops are coming. They must have heard about the kidnapping. A police officer was walking towards them. Josh, that's just Officer Fallon, Jimmy Fallon's grandfather, said Dink. Jimmy came to get a book sign. I saw him inside the book nook. Maybe we should show Officer Fallon these letters, Ruth Rose suggested. They could be clues if Wallace Wallace has really been kidnapped. Who's been kidnapped? asked Officer Fallon, who was now standing near them. Not my grandson, I hope, he said, grinning. Dink followed Officer Fallon the two, I'm sorry, Dink showed Officer Fallon the two letters. We think Wallace Wallace might have been kidnapped, he said. He promised he'd come to sign the books, but he isn't here. Officer Fallon read Mavis' letter first and then Dink's. He scratched his chin then handed the letters back. The letters do sound a bit suspicious, he said, but it's more likely that Mr. Wallace just missed his flight. Jimmy Fallon ran out of the book nook, waving a Wallace Wallace book at his grandfather. Grandpa, he never came. Can we go for ice cream anyway? Officer Fallon put a big hand on Jimmy's head. In a minute, son. To Dink, he said, I wouldn't worry. Mr. Wallace will turn up. Call me tomorrow if there's no news, okay? They watched Jimmy and his grandfather walk away. Dink handed Mavis's letter back to her. He folded his and slid it into his pocket. 
crazy thoughts were bouncing around in his head. What if Wallace Wallace really has been kidnapped? It happened because I invited him to Greenlawn. I'm practically an accomplice. I don't want to wait till tomorrow, he said finally. I say we start looking for Wallace Wallace now. Well, where do we start? Ruth Rose asked. Dink jerked his thumb over his shoulder. Right here at the book nook. Excuse me, Mavis Green said shyly. May I come along too? Sure, Dink said. He marched back inside the book nook with the others following. Mr. Paskey was putting the Wallace Wallace books back on a shelf. He looked even more nervous than before. Excuse me, Mr. Paskey, Dink said. Have you heard from Wallace Wallace? Mr. Paskey's hand shot up to his bow tie. No, Dink, not a word. We think he was kidnapped, Josh said. Mr. Paskey swallowed, making his bow tie wiggle. Now, Joshua, let's not jump to conclusions. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for his absence. Dink told Mr. Paskey about the two letters. I'm really worried, Mr. Paskey. Where could he be? Mr. Paskey took out a handkerchief and wiped his face. I have no idea. He removed a piece of paper from his desk and handed it to Dink. All I have is his itinerary. The others looked over Dink's shoulder as he read. Itinerary for Wallace Wallace. Number one. Arrive at Bradley Airport at 7 p.m. Friday, July 15th. New England Airlines Flight 3132. Number two. Meet driver from Lawrence Taxi Service. Number three. Drive to the Shangri-La Hotel. Number four. Sign books at the Book Nook at 11 a.m. Saturday, July 16th. Number five. Lunch, then back to the airport for 4.30 p.m. flight. Can I keep this, Dink asked Mr. Paskey. Mr. Paskey blinked. Well, I guess that'll be all right. Why do you need the itinerary? Dink picked up a marker and drew circles around the words airport, taxi, hotel, and book nook. This is like a trail. It leads from the airport last night to the book nook today, Dink said. Somewhere along this trail, Wallace Wallace disappeared. Dink stared at the itinerary. And we're going to find him. All right, click below for chapter four.